Every Monday on the channel, we do draft strategy videos. Tuesday is more player analysis. Today, we're looking at the best draft strategy if you are picking at the end of your draft. So if you have the 112 pick, you're on the turn, last pick of the first round, your friends hate you and they gave you the worst pick in your draft, I'm here to help you out. Last Monday, we did the first pick. So if you got the first pick, and we've also done draft strategy, just breaking it down from like the first half of the draft, the second half of the draft, one through six, seven through 12 in both one quarterback and super flex. So we will link all those down below for you. But if you enjoy today's video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll do this every Monday. Again, player analysis Tuesday, Friday. We'll do some draft streams throughout the week as well. But now that preseason is up and kicking, we get a little bit better of an idea of the players that we really want to be targeting. Now it's just week one of preseason, so we're not going to go crazy with it. I even have the first game on right now. I'm filming this on Sunday. The Chiefs and the Saints just kicked off. And if you all have been following my Alvin Kamara hype, then we're feeling pretty damn good after that first drive. But let's get into it. The ideal draft strategy, the number one draft strategy if you're picking at the end of the first round. Now, as always, we are drafting on the best single platform there is in the world. That is Underdog Fantasy. They're about to launch their own BDG tournament on there for y'all. So we do a lot of super flex stuff on here. This is one quarterback today, but they're launching a tournament for BDGE fans only. Super flex, so make sure you are on the platform. They're even going to give you a little bow tie Abby as a profile picture if you join it. So we're sitting there at the 12, and for me, this is pretty easy. We just double tap the two flex plays, right? Some combination of a running back and a wide receiver. I actually really, really like the end of the first round. I like being at the end of the first round. I get all, asked all the time, you know, what are your favorite picks? Where's your favorite spot to draft from? For me, I don't necessarily know if I have a favorite spot to draft from, but my least favorite spot is like that 105 to one eight-ish range because it feels like you have to reach for players that you're a little bit uncertain about like the Eckler here or Cooper Cup with his hamstring injury Travis Kelsey if you really want to build your team around a tight end so I'm sitting there at the 12 and I'm like cool I can kind of get my pick of what running back slash what wide receiver I want is my one and one respectively at those positions again this is more draft strategy than player analysis so don't look too far into like the players that I that I take and look more into like the team build that I'm putting together. So I took Nick Chubb and I will happily take Nick Chubb at the 112. I think I have him ranked all the way up as like my ninth or 10th player this year in drafts. And this is a half PPR setting. So give me Chubb there at 112 as my RB1 all day. And then you get your decision again. Like if you like Waddle, go with Waddle. I like Waddle. You can get Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson, I'm on Ross St. Brown. I got no problem with any of those dudes as your wide receiver one. But I think running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, running back, whoever you want to put more respect on to get that 112 stamp on their name, good to go now where things get a little bit tricky right when you're when you're drafting on the turn when you get to the 312 spot right you have to make your decisions man you don't have the luxury of hoping that value falls to you you kind of have to get your guy because you're not picking again you get the 312 you get the 41 and then you don't pick again until like 20 22 spots later a lot of good players go off the board in those 22 spots now the third round if you've been following me, you know, I've kind of just laid out saying that I want one of the top QBs, whether it's Mahomes, Allen, Hurts, or one of the wide receivers that if you can't get there, I'm fine with Devontae, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper. Now, when you're at the end, end of the third round, a lot of times those guys just don't get there to you. So rather than reaching for dudes or rather than drafting dudes that I don't really feel great about, like I don't feel good about Debo. I don't feel great about Najee Harris. I don't feel great about gives his role there the talent was never in question but the role there in Detroit Keenan all these guys that I'm kind of unsure about at the turn I will just take the best player available at a position that starting to really fucking matter in fantasy football which is where I took Justin Fields at the 312 and I took DJ Moore at the 41 again like this is not me saying that like DJ Moore is getting such a huge increase because of the preseason game that happened in Chicago although it was great to see listen I'm not here to argue about Justin Fields if y'all been following me you know I've been super hype about him all offseason he's been like my fourth round target in every draft this is the only way I can get him unless I want to try to let him fall to the 51261 which ain't fucking happening so if you're at the 12 I really like the double tap of Justin Fields and a wide receiver. If you're in like a home league that's a little bit less serious, there's a chance you can get Calvin Ridley here. There's a chance you can get Devonta Smith here. There's a chance you get DK Metcalf here. And I would take those guys over DJ Moore. I'm not, listen, I'm not getting unrealistically hyped about DJ Moore just based on the preseason game. But DJ Moore for me, 
he is my wide receiver 19 in my personal rankings right now. And I have him above pretty much everyone that was drafted after him. So if I'm looking at this board and I'm saying, I don't really want to reach onto these running backs because I know at the next turn, I know at the next turn I can get some guys like Damian Pierce or Alexander Madison or any of those guys that you feel comfortable with. Like I know I'm going to be able to get those guys to the next turn where I'm not going to be able to look at the fall off from wide receiver to running back. It's like, okay, if I don't go with DJ Moore and instead I grab Najee Harris, the next wide receiver these guys are, are drafting are fucking Gabe Davis, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Dudes that I don't feel comfortable with as my wide receiver too at all, but I feel great about Damian Pierce as my running back too. So I have DJ Moore right now as my wide receiver 19 in my rankings. And if you just want my rankings right now, they are available in our 2023 draft guide. You can get them one of two ways. You can get it at full price right now for 25 bucks on bdge.shop. It's got our positional rankings, our full top big board for one quarterback for super flex. It's got our must draft list. It's got our all fade list. It's got our draft strategy, our favorite targets after pick 100 or maybe round 10 in drafts. And we're doing preseason weekly recap write-ups for every single game and the most important takeaways from every preseason game throughout the rest of the summer. So that's probably the most valuable thing in this entire draft guide outside of my rankings is the recaps telling you like, okay, it's basically like a stock market happening within each little paragraph that I write for each team. So you can get on bdg.shop at full price, or you can go to Underdog Fantasy, which is where we're doing all these drafts, underdogfantasy.com, or go to the app, which is linked down below. You click on that link, it'll take you right to the app store. And if it's your first time on the platform, you deposit $10 or more, throw down BDGE as the promo code. And not only are they going to double whatever you put down there, so now you could draft two times as many drafts with us, but they're going to email you out the draft guide absolutely free. Yes, it will be updated throughout the summer. As soon as it updates, I send it to them. They send it to you. All of it will be there for you. All right, get our draft guide, BDG.shop, full price, or Underdog Fantasy for $10. That is it. That's our ranking. So I went with Justin Fields, and I went with DJ Moore there. So now we have our QB1. We've got two wide receivers, and we've got our running back. At the next turn, I was kind of experimenting a little bit with the tight end position. I was tossing around the idea with going TJ Hawkinson at the 401, but that felt a little bit spicy for me. So I stayed I stayed put there, and I almost actually got him at the 512. He went three spots before me, as you can see. I ended up going with George Kittle at the 512 and double-tapped him with a running back at 6-1. Now, I really wouldn't have had a problem if I wanted to go with two more flex plays and went with another wide receiver. If you are in full PPR or if you're starting three wide receivers like this league is, then I would seriously consider doing that over the George Kittle type tight end at this point. Because you could have went with Damian Pierce and Tyler Lockett or Mike Evans or whoever you like in that bunch. So when you're at the 5-6 turn, this is a really good value pocket for your running back too. And then kind of your choice, depending on your league settings of getting your starting tight end, whether it's Kittle or if Hawkinson falls to you there, or I really like Goddard. Some of y'all like Darren Waller. If that's your guy, go get him because you probably won't be able to get him at the next turn. So RB and then your choice of wide receiver tight end there. I really, really like it that five, six turn. And then when we keep going, you know, again, it's just it's just you're getting to the turns and I'm just double tapping flex plays over and over and over again. If you're in a league where you feel less confident about the starters that you pick, like you think George Kittle might be hurt or injured, maybe you grab another tight end a little bit later, which I did, and we'll get to rounds 11 through 18 in a minute. But I double tapped Jahan Dotson and Isaiah Pacheco, so Dotson will be my wide receiver three. I'm a big fan of Dotson, have been this entire summer. Most people are. Everyone knows he's a pretty good wide receiver. We saw him out there with Sam Howell in the first preseason game. They connected for a nice touchdown. I'm excited about that Washington offense, the passing offense at least, uh, under Sam Howell. I'm not like overly excited, but I think he could do a little damage out there. So I double tapped him with Isaiah Pacheco. Somehow Khalil Herbert fell to me at the 9-12, Romeo Dobbs at the 10-1. i tell you what, again, like tomorrow – I'm going to do a full like winners and losers episode of week one of preseason. And so make sure you're subscribed if you want to hear that one. One of the biggest takeaways I had or one of the biggest winners in general was that Green Bay offense. Jordan Love just looked calm, cool, collected, ready to go. I loved what I saw from him taking deep shots to Christian Watson and didn't connect, but those will connect during the season every every once in a while. I think it'll be big plays for him. I liked uh, Romeo Dobbs, the consistency of the routes run and just the connection for the touchdown as well. Aaron Jones was out there for one play, dumped it off for a nice little like 10, 12-yard pass, got off the field afterwards. Big fan of this Green Bay offense, and I think it's about time we start taking them a lot more seriously in fantasy drafts. So to be honest with you, when I took DJ Moore at the 4-1, I would have been fine taking fucking Christian Watson there. So I ended up getting his counterpart, uh, again, Khalil Herbert, Romeo Dobbs. So now we're just building depth through the flex plays. We have a really rock-solid starting lineup, right? We have our QB in Justin Fields. We have our George Kittle in the fifth round at tight end. And then we're sandwiching the rest of it. Our running backs, Nick Chubb, Damian Pierce, Isaiah Pacheco, Khalil Herbert. Wide receivers, Jalen Waddell, DJ Moore, Jahan Dotson, Romeo Dobbs. Now, 
It's a little bit weak at wide receiver, I'm not going to lie, but based on where you have to draft from, this is kind of the worst part about it. Had I done it differently, maybe I swapped George Kittle out and grab, you know, Evan Ingram at the next turn so that I would have had a better wide receiver three and Dotson as like my first flex. But I do like how my running backs turned out a lot. And when we get into the last bunch of rounds, I really like how I ended this draft. I didn't really need much more depth at running back. So I grabbed my last one here at Samaje, who ran every single snap with the starters week one in Denver. Uh, Denver played their starters for four series. Russell Wilson was out there for four series. Samaje Piran played every single snap. So Javante Williams is still 100% for me. I need to see it before I believe it. I think Samaje Piran is going to have a monster role. If he misses any time, we just saw what happens when the first string is out there. It's all Samaje Piran. You know, I've been talking about Jordan Love, so I grabbed him as my QB2. Jake Ferguson is another massive winner. He is, to me, he's he's shaping up to be like the late round target at tight end in this Dallas offense. Looked great in the first preseason game. All we've heard all offseason was um, there might have been a little bit of committee, but the last month or so has been all Jake Ferguson, all Jake Ferguson, all Jake Ferguson. And he was just targeted early and often in the preseason game. He feels like he's going to be a very big part of this offense. So to be honest with you right now, he was going as like a 17th, 18th round pick. I'm doing these best ball drafts. I don't care what the ADP looks like right now. Once we get into like the 13th to 18th round, go get the guys that you think are going to be good. Just because he has a 15th round ADP, just because he has a 16th round ADP, I don't give a shit. I want the best players on my team based on the information that we have available at our hands. And Jake Ferguson is one of those dudes. DJ Chark, I love Michael Wilson. Jaden Reed, another Green Bay guy. So if Watson doesn't hit, we're looking good with Romeo Dobbs and Jaden Reed, Isaiah Likely, Puka Nakua. So that is how I rounded out. Obviously, we were a little bit light on the wide receivers in terms of like talent, but we tried to pair it up with dudes who I think can be on the verge of having breakout years. I think Chark is where my money would be to be the wide receiver one there in Carolina when all is said and done. I love Michael Wilson. Y'all know about that. I haven't stopped chirping about him all offseason. Jaden Reed seems to be set up to be the starting slot receiver in Green Bay, so he'll have his splash weeks. Isaiah Likely, if something were to happen to Mark Andrews, he's pretty much a top five fantasy tight end. And Puka, I think he ends up being the wide receiver three there in LA. So that's kind of the strategy I'm looking at if I have the 12th pick in my draft or I'm at the end of the round. A lot of the times, like if you're the 10th or 11th, this kind of still falls into that same mold. You'll you'll a lot of times be able to get the same type of players. So I would think the same strategy. The only thing I would really, really seriously consider is who you like at tight end, what guy you like the most at tight end, what kind of guys you like the most at tight end, and try to strategize around what rounds you want to target him. Because if you don't like George Kittle and you love you know, Darren Waller, Evan Ingram, you can wait till the next turn to get him. If you love Hawkinson, you might have to grab him at that 4-1 and hope that some wide receivers like Ayuk or Mike Williams or Chris Godwin fall to you at the next turn. You know, so I would just adjust accordingly based on like your player preferences. But this is the way I've seen like the value pockets kind of fall if you're drafting from the end of the round. So again, if you want the rankings, you can do that by downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code BDGE. You deposit $10 or more on there for the first time, and they're going to email you out the guide absolutely free, plus double whatever you throw down. And when you have that money on your account, you could draft with us in the drafts that I was just showing you on the board. Those are all best ball drafts, meaning you don't do sit starts, you don't do waiver wire, you don't do trades. You just draft a big-ass team, and you let the league play out as it plays out and if you win you come back and collect your monies all right so hopefully that team right there collects us a little bit of money if not please support the brand because we need to make a little bit of money in order to keep my margarita influx incoming into my veins all right bdg.shop subscribe like all the things that youtube people say at the end of the videos i love you and i will see you all tomorrow with week one winners and losers from the preseason